Welcome to Bunnyfish Crafts. I'm your host Heather, known as Bunnyfish on Ravelry, Instagram, YouTube, and Patreon. Today is Tuesday, the 14th of April, 2020, and I believe this is episode 14. So we don't have our normal co-host this week, but we do have little Blob right there. She is doing her reading, her silent reading for school and then it is only a little after 10 yeah a little after 10 in the morning and we have finished with our schoolwork except for this reading going on right now which is pretty exciting however the real schoolwork with packets doesn't start until tomorrow so hopefully that will go as smoothly as today did <laughs> i'm i'm hopeful but i don't know that that's realistic so I have a lot to show you this week. I feel like I did a lot of knitting and so much reading, so I'm pretty excited to jump into that. Before we talk about anything else, I finished this square and I don't think I showed it on the podcast. I think I just put it up on Instagram. This is that first square in the this is the first square in the chain reaction afghan, the one that was giving me so much trouble. It's really pretty though, which is why I decided to keep the, um, the pattern in. I know I showed it in progress. I don't think I showed it finished. You know what? I also haven't shown trough finished, I don't think. But I finished it a long time ago and then it was still wet the next time I recorded a podcast. I do have a couple projects that I finished this week though, which I'm really, really excited about. Um, first up is the crusting leg warmers, and I didn't think I was going to finish these this week because I just didn't, but I did. I had this much left to go, and this has kind of a, a I can't count saga. So there are six repeats of cr the crusting pattern down the leg warmers and I counted on the second leg warmer and I was like, oh yeah, that's six. It was five. I put on the cuff, I bound off and I went to take my finished object picture and I was like, why is this one so much shorter than the first one? And then I lined them up and I recounted and I had to rip out the bind off which was a sewn bind off so that's literally picking every stitch out and then take it all the way back out of the ribbing up here which is only 10 rounds not a terrible thing and then add in another repeat and then the the cuff so it's fine it's not a big deal I had counting issues a lot this week, so it's fine. Um, but yeah, so these are finished. I am super excited. Only one pair of gift leg warmers to go. I am not going to cast those on until next month, I don't think. Um, I have a few other projects going right now and one more that I want to cast on this month for sure. So probably starting those leg warmers next week. But yeah, these ones are finished. So I'm excited. And then the other thing, the other big finish is, ba -dum, ba -dum. I have the second star sock and I love this mi mismatched matching pair. But again, I can't count. Can you see that the cuffs don't quite match up? I counted wrong by two rounds when I started the second sock, so that brought my chart up by two rows. Everything was thrown a little bit off. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I think they look fine. Um, if the recipient cares that much, then she can knit her own socks in the future. So yeah, these are the socks. Uh, the yarn I used for the crusting leg warmers was... Knit Picks, Stroll Glimmer, and Sapphire Heather. So here's our little co-host. She wants to show you something really quick. Mm -hmm. What is it? It's a fairy tale. Is that your newest fairy tale? 
Yep. Should they expect a video from you soon? Mm -hmm. Where you read it? Oh, mm -hmm. very nice. And the fairy tale is called The Caring Princess. So, star socks. I don't remember exactly what I was saying because Mara finished with her reading time. Um, and then she wanted to show you a thing. So, anyway, star socks. Here's where I am. The second one was all the way up here last week. So, I did quite a bit of work on that. Pretty pleased with myself. I think they look so cool. The pattern is drawn from the Keep Calm and Shine Bright yarn cozy that I designed. I think they're so fun. Um, last week I said I was not going to do color management. Totally a lie. Totally did color management so I could have a pink heel. I just Once the idea was in my head, I couldn't get over it. And the pink, I think, was going to start up here. So I did some color management. It's fine. And I only had, I did not weigh this many <laughs> before I started knitting with it. Um, I only had about a yard left when I finished the sock. So good job using that mini to its fullest. It takes about, it took about seven grams for the um, second, secondary color for those socks. The yarns that I used were for the, um, the star color on both socks is Leading Men Fiber Arts showstopper in the colorway Orchard Slope. The, um, the minis that I used for the secondary color were 716 minis and then the main color was 716 on the 716 Guy base which is a Targi base in the Slayer Pride Parade version 2.0. I'm super pleased with these. I'm very proud of myself. Do I seem a little smug? I feel a little bit smug. Just a little. So, other than that, works in progress. I have a bunch. This is the least exciting, so I'll show it to you first. I have this scrubby yarn that I picked up on clearance from my local grocery store a while ago. And with um, the stay-at-home order, we are washing a lot of dishes and I like to wash my um, my washcloth I like to change it out at least once a day sometimes twice a day depending on what we are what the meal is and that means we're going through a lot of dishcloths right now at at least three meals a day plus sometimes snacks so I received some scrubbies in a swap from a friend, but I only have two of them. So I decided I needed more. I do not love working with this yarn. It's um, the Red Heart Scrubby yarn. I don't love it, but I am going to love how it scrubs things. And um, I don't know what the pattern that I'm using is called because I originally made something like this a very long time ago. I think Mara was like one when I made them. So it is crocheted through the back loop. You have your cast on number of single crochets. You increase on one side, decrease on the other, crochet through the back loop, and then crochet it together to make a tube, and then turn it into a flat scrubby. It's really cool. Um, and it was a free pattern on Ravelry. So if it's still there, I will link it um, and I'll call it dish scrubby. So yeah, that's started. I think it's about half as big as I need it to be. This is an experiment to see if I like this size and shape. If I don't, I will just crochet rectangles as scrubbies, but I don't know. This is what I felt like doing, so this is what I did. I have also been working a good deal on my sweater. So what I had last week was this panel right here in between these two stitch markers. So I just had a little tiny bit. And now I have 
Baba shoulders. I have arms going on right here. And I am just working my way down to get to that, uh, the split for the sleeves, which pretty much any sweater knitter will tell you is the best part of a sweater because then everything seems to go so fast. But the getting to that part is not the best part of sweater knitting. The yarn that I'm using for this is Plymouth Yarn Encore Color Spun in the color 7808. And I am still on the first ball. I have six. My plan is to work to the sleeve, work to the sleeve split, and then, um, and then if I am still on the first ball, finish out the first ball. If I'm on the second ball, then I'm going to immediately start the sleeves, um, so that I can make sure that they're long enough. I would rather make sure that the, um, I want to make sure that the length of the sleeve is correct before I worry about the length of the sweater because I'll just use every last scrap of yarn to get the length of the sweater. So the sleeves are really what's important for getting the length right. Um, and also knitting sleeves after you have a full body of the sweater is really, really cumbersome. I find anyway, I find it much easier to knit the sleeves first and then kind of pin them to the body of the sweater using those giant safety pin looking things. They look like giant diaper pins, actually. Um, I think they're stitch holders. I don't know. I never use them for their intended purpose. So that is my plan with this. It is going pretty well, but I'm only doing... I don't know, maybe four rows a day at this point now that they're longer rows. I don't need this anytime soon. It is spring. It is getting warmer. So by the time I finish it, I will probably have to put it away for the summer. But I do want this sweater because I have been wanting to make this sweater for a very, very long time. At least five years. Probably longer. Oh, it's going to be so cute. I love the marling and the colors in this. It's just, it's going to be perfect. I also have, do you remember those little tiny sock toes that I had last week? Just little teeny tiny things. Just that much right there. Well, I have the first sock finished. So I have, I have part of my toe up tutorial, not my toe up, my two at a time tutorial, um, all finished. I have the cast on video finished and then I'm going to also have a heel video that has three different heels in it. So the cast on video is finished. That will come out maybe later this week, maybe next week. I don't know. I don't want to put that one out super early and then have people have to wait a really long time for the heel video. So that one's, it's ready. It's edited. It's already on YouTube, but it's scheduled out. And then the second sock is past the heel because obviously I had to do the heel for the two at a time heel um, knitting. And as you can see, I am helical knitting for these. So I didn't actually knit them two at a time. Shh, don't tell anyone. It's our little secret. I did knit the toes two at a time and I did knit the heels two at a time, but the feet and the legs and the cuffs I am not doing because when you're helical knitting and you're doing two at a time, it's just a lot going on and yarn does not like it. It gets tangled. It gets fussy. So yeah, this, this sock should definitely be finished next week. It's just, I have, um, I have about 50 rounds to go and then the cuff. So 50 rounds of leg and then the cuff, which is only 10 rounds and a bind off. So yeah, that is, I'm doing, um, another, I'm doing a sewn bind off again. It's just my favorite for toe up socks. It's really, really stretchy. 
and it looks super neat. I just, it's my favorite. So if I have the option to do a one by one rib so I can do a really neat sewn bind off, that is what I always choose for toe up socks. It's my favorite. Let me tell you about the yarn really quick. So the yarn is, the darker color is Leading Men Fiber Arts and Orchard Slope, the same one that I used in the star socks and I also used in Trough. This 100 gram ball of yarn is just seemingly never ending. And then this spring green is either mint to be or pucker. I don't remember which one, but it is by Queen City Yarn and it's on their Noda sock. So yeah, these are for me. I'm super excited about these socks. I've been knitting myself a lot of socks this year. It's interesting. Don't usually knit this much for myself, but you know what? I'm okay with it. Sweater for myself, socks for myself. These next socks, that was Mara's story. These next socks are not for me. These are Christmas socks for a nephew. I do not know what this yarn is. It was um, bought from, it was bought from Tuesday morning, which is kind of like a discount store. And I lost the tag. It just fell off in my stash. I don't know where it is. So I don't know what this yarn is, but the pattern is Three-Legged Race by Megan Williams. It looks like that. It's a panel down the outside of the leg and foot. Um, I did not use the heel in the pattern. I just used a heel flap and gusset because this is another tutorial sock. So this is for nine inch circulars. So I have started recording nine inch circular tutorials. You will notice that the toe is not on a nine inch circular. That's because I don't knit my toes on nine inch circulars. I knit them magic loop or with DPNs or sometimes with two nine inch circulars doing like a two circular method. But all I have left is the toe on this and then I will actually be starting the other sock toe up. So yeah, that will be my other tutorial. So I'm hoping to have the nine inch circular tutorials finished in the next couple of weeks too. It's kind of dependent on um, the the quality of light that's going on outside because I don't have studio lights. So if it's overcast, super overcast, then I just can't record. My phone does not like it. Um, so yeah, tutorial sock, Megan Williams, three-legged race. And all of my socks are knit on US zero, 2.0 millimeters. I am also working on, I have one more project. Where is it? I found it and I actually have two more projects. One knitting and then spinning. I have a pair of crusting mitts, which I am actually working two at a time, even though it's not my favorite um, because I only have this much yarn left. It's less than 50 grams. I don't exactly remember how much was left. Um, and I don't necessarily want to use every little tiny bit of this, but I don't want to make one mitt and then find that I don't have enough yarn for the other mitt. So I figured I would just go two at a time. The pattern was originally written to do two at a time anyway, um, because I wrote a lot of my starting patterns. I still, I think I still write my patterns, the ones that are left and right. I'm pretty sure I still write them so that you can work them two at a time. So it has the instructions for the right and the left next to each other in two columns. Um, because if you do work two at a time socks, it's just really, really, it's so much easier than having to flip back and forth every single round. And if you're just working one at a time, it's not any more work for you. It's just less work if you are doing two at a time. So anyway, these mitts are for me. 
so many things for me right now. Um, the yarn that I'm using is my leftover Northern Bee Studios yarn in the Northwoods colorway. I just made a tri tine out of it last month, and so I'm making myself a pair of coordinating mitts. The texture pattern on cresting is not the same as the, the texture pattern on tri tine, but I think that they will look nice enough together. And then the last project that I am working on is the spin for Karen. And I've put on a decent amount of progress. That's much more than it was last week. Um, I'm not focusing on this project, but I am trying to spin a little bit every day. So eventually this will be a finished skein of yarn, finished three ply. Last up, I have been reading a lot. <laughs> Nobody is surprised. Um, I think last week I was talking about how I was almost out of library books, except I still had some audiobooks. Well, because Patrick went back to work, I have been able to listen to audiobooks using the Xbox because it doesn't interfere with him. Um, but I'm going to talk about those in a minute actually. So I finished the paper book that I was reading, which is The Care and Feeding of Ravenously Hungry Girls by Anissa Gray. I super enjoyed reading this book, even though the subject matter is not enjoyable. Um, but I talked about that last week. So if you're interested to know what this book is about, go back and check last week's. But I do recommend it. I think it was really, really well written. Really, really good read. Which means I only have two physical library books left from my checkout stack. I have started one of them, which I didn't bring up here. I've read the first two chapters of Some Assembly Required by Erin Andrews. It is a teen biography of a transgendered teen. And he was dating one of the one of the other trans teens who I read their bio of last year. I don't remember her name. In fact, the chapter that I'm in right now just reintroduced her into the book. So, or I guess not reintroduced her. Introduced her first for the first time in this book, but I don't remember her name. Um, and that's why I picked up the book because they were dating and I thought it would be interesting to see things from, I really like reading things from different people's perspectives. So I know they're going to talk about some of the same things in their books and I enjoy that. I have also started from my very own collection of paper books because I do have a collection of books. I have some. I've bought some and been gifted some, um, and I have not read all of them. I actually have a lot of books on my shelf that I have not read. So I'm not going to run out of books to read, but I'm still anxious about running out of library books. I know it's really silly. <sighs> we all have our own neuroses. So I started reading The Ocean at the End of the Lane and it is by Neil Gaiman. It is super, super good and creepy. Um, he wrote Coraline and The Graveyard Book. And if you don't read kids books, he also wrote um, The American Gods books and lots of things. I don't know, he's written a babillion books. I really like his writing. Um, 
my kid's dad's brother <laughs> bought this for me the last Christmas that he and I were together. And so it was too like emotionally tied up in things for me to read it at the time. But now I'm reading it because it's not emotionally fraught to read the book. And yeah, I'm really, really enjoying the story, although it does creep me out. And I had to put it down last night <laughs> because I was reading it at like one o'clock in the morning. And I was like, nope, too scary. I'm done. I'm going to go to bed. It's not that scary, but everything's scarier at one o'clock in the morning. And then I have this stack of audiobooks. These were the four audiobooks that I had from the library, and I have finished two of them. So, first, I listened to The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert, and it's really, really good. It is the story of a girl. Alice and her grandmother wrote a book of fairy tales but it turns out that the fairy tales are not just fiction. A really really good book, super enjoyable. I listened to all of it over two days um, and then I listened to Children of Virtue and Ven Vengeance by Tomi Adeyeme. The narrator on this book did such an amazing job. So, so good. Um, it's read by Bonnie Turpin. Amazing. Amazing narration. Such a good story. Um, there better be a third one with the way that this book ended very very good i again i think i listened to this i think this one took me three days but only because i was watching it in between movie a movie marathon with mara so very good and now i am listening to two audiobooks so this one is the one i'm further in this is the night country by melissa albert and it is um, the sequel to The Hazelwood. Very good. More fairy tale character things ensuing. Not the fairy tale characters that we all know and love. Different fairy tale characters. Um, much darker fairy tale characters. I'm enjoying it a lot. I am finished through disc four, and there's only seven discs. So I will likely finish this within the next two days. I don't know about today. I have a lot of computer work to do today, so I don't know about that, but maybe tomorrow. And then this one is Chasing King's Killer by James L. Swanson, and it is a nonfiction book about the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. And this will take me time because I am listening to it Mar a little less loud. I'm listening to it with Gabriel. So we're using this as his 30 minutes of reading at a time um, to kind of stretch out his books, his paper books, a little bit longer because we only have, he's almost finished with book number 13 in the, I want to say it's 13, in American Chillers, and then we have one more American Chiller, and then we have three books that his grandma got him for Christmas, and then that's pretty much all of the stuff that's like in his grade range that he's interested in reading, but he does really like nonfiction, so we're going to listen to this together. Um, we've only listened to the first just over 30 minutes. We finished out the track after the time timer went off. Um, and it's only 5 hours and 41 minutes, so that's, what, 11 days worth of listening. So this one will take me a little more time. And also we didn't listen to it today because we couldn't find the Xbox controller, so we couldn't listen to it. 
the Xbox controller is found now though. So if I want to listen to my own audiobook, I will. Uh, so yeah, that will be coming up again. The narrator on that one is super good. Mara, you're being so loud. So yeah, um, that's what I'm reading. I did do earlier this week some insta polls to help me decide what I should read next. I pulled six books off of my shelf. Um, the Ocean at the End of the Lane was one of them. So I pulled six books off of my shelf and let people vote on what I should read next and I will be taking that into consideration as I plan my next reading. Um, I'm going to read the books on my shelf in conjunction with the uh, some assembly required and then once I finish some assembly required I'm gonna read my last library book so yeah that's a little scary after these audiobooks oh I'm still listening to linger on play away and then I have two more playaways um, that are a series or maybe just like a duology I don't know but they go together so I do still have a little bit more from the library, but I'm getting dangerously close. However, Audible has free books for kids to listen to, including young adults. And it's not an extensive collection. I think there's like 70 books in the young adult range. But I scanned through and there's at least four of them that I would be interested in listening to. So that's pretty exciting. And that will also give Gabriel options for things to read because he's not quite at like the young adult level of reading. He's in the upper junior fiction level of reading. The, the tween reading, not the young adult reading. So I haven't looked at the catalog for that from Audible. But if you're interested in that, if you have kids at home who are running sh short on books, um, just Google Audible free for students. And they have a pretty good catalog. So I'm excited about that. Okay, I'm rambling. And Mara is being so loud in the background. She is, are you building a house? What are you doing? Oh, I'm doing my own little thing crafting at the same time. What are you crafting? Oh, making outfits. She's making outfits for her LOL dolls out of paper and she's talking to them the whole time. So that's what all of that noise was in the background in case you were wondering. Okay, I am going to get this edited so that I can get it posted by tomorrow and I will see you guys in about a week. Bye!